Hey there, science students. Here's a little podcast on separation techniques. Enjoy the music as we go through some of the techniques that we will be using in class this semester as we separate mixtures. Some of the different techniques that we will be incorporating include magnetism, filtration, evaporation, centrifugation, chromatography, and distillation. These are all of the different techniques that we will use to separate mixtures. So I expect that you become familiar with the techniques. We will use all of them in class and some of the terminology associated with them. One of the ways that we can separate some metals is we can use magnets. So magnets work very well for iron, cobalt, and nickel. These are three physical properties that describe those three pure substances. So some of the processes that use magnetic separation, iron ore, um, recycling facilities use it to separate their metals, and we can also use nanomagnetic particles to separate um, small, tiny particles like in, in your blood. So these are a couple examples where magnets work well to separate mixtures. So if you want to filter some solid from a liquid, we can use the old filtration technique. Well, filtration simply works by adding your mixture uh, to a funnel with a filter. So the filter paper comes in a lot of different sizes and the filter paper is used to remove those particles from it and so you will end up with the filtrate as you are filtering the solution. So a lot of times if you have a suspension this would work really well to remove those the residue from the mixture. So the residue is what's left over and the filtrate is what's removed after you filter it. So filtration is a nice technique that we often use in science class to remove larger particles uh, that can be removed by the filter that we use. So we have a lot of different filters. Some of the filters that we use are down to 500 microns, so it can remove very small particles. And we also have some screen filters that work well for removing larger substances. So depending on what you're trying to remove, uh, we have different capabilities to filter material. If you want to remove and separate small individual compounds, a good technique is to use chromatography. So chromatography is used to separate dyes. So we can, in, we can use paper chromatography to run a solvent up the paper. And when it does, it will actually remove the different dyes based upon their solubility. So we can also use chromatography for plant pigments which is a lab that we do um, second semester when we start studying plants. Uh, gas chromatographs are a little bit different, but basically they work on the same principle. They separate the gases based upon the molecular size of those particles. And then DNA testing using gel electrophoresis is another activity that we do second semester, but each one of these is a unique fingerprint uh, based upon the DNA sample from an individual, and it's basically separating these fragments uh, based upon their sizes. So the bigger chunk of DNA uh, will move further along as it migrates down the gel, um, basically separating it by electrical charges. So again, gel electrophoresis is the process that we'll learn about second semester. So we do a lab that involves paper chromatography. Like I mentioned on the previous slides, uh, we basically put a dot of an ink on a piece of paper. We can put it into a solvent. So the solvent could be water or it could be some other type of solvent like alcohol. And depending on the solubility of the material, uh, the paper will wick up the water. The water will travel up the paper. As it does that, it dissolves the, the solute and the solute will come out of solution and separate onto the piece of paper. So paper chromatography is a nice, easy way to separate that. So gas chromatography, again, we put the mixture into here. Um, you can then run electrical current through here and it will basically 
separate the mat materials using using a gas as it travels through the chromatographic column. So there's the stationary phase, which absorbs some of the components. Uh, the mobile phase, which is the active phase, will sweep the column down. And then there's the detector, which is typically hooked up to a computer screen, which will then give you a reading to indicate, hey, here's what was found in there. So if we put a sample of orange juice in a gas chromatograph, we would find out that there are certain peaks based upon the ions that are present in there. So each one of these peaks represents a specific ion or sometimes even a compound that's found in that particular sample. Uh, another method that's used to separate mixtures based upon their boiling points. So boiling point is a nice property of matter that is a physical property. So we can heat up substances and based upon when it boils, we can then use a tool to collect the material that vapors out of it. So one very simple type of distillation is actually known as evaporation so if we heat up a sample in here let's say this was salt water we can heat up the water the water will vaporize and we can have the solute left over so this is evaporation which is the initial step of distillation so in a simple distillation you're going to have some type of furnace where you heat up a, a mixture the different uh, substances will heat and boil at different temperatures and as it goes up as it vaporizes it will go into this condenser and it will start to cool and eventually you'll end up having it condense and drip out and you're left with some of the pure substance so in a lot of cases the distillate might be um, might be water and then we're left with the solution that has a higher boiling point in the chamber afterwards so here's a common lab distillation apparatus. So you have your Bunsen burner and a boiling flask. You put your, your liquid into here with whatever solute in it. You heat it up and make sure that the gases can't escape. So instead of escaping out of the top of the flask, they'll escape into the, into the distillation tube. And what happens is, as it goes into the tube, it'll start to cool. And one of the ways that it's cooled down is by actually running cold water through the distillation tube. So cold water will make it cool much quicker. And as it does that, we left, we're left with the distillate afterwards. So right here is the pure liquid that's removed. So if we wanted to keep doing this process, we could get all the water to vaporize out and we would be left with the solid in here afterwards. So again, here's the, the similar apparatus, but, but the idea behind it is that cooling water is put into the distillation tube. That causes condensation to occur at a much faster rate and we are left with the pure substance in the flask afterwards. So again, the solution is boiled and the steam is driven off and we can then collect it. So again, here's what I was referring to. We're going to be left with salt after we boil it and the pure water will be left in the flask. So when we do distillation in class, we're going to find out that there is no chemical change that's occurring. We're simply removing the solute from the solvent and we can separate that and we should be able to get a 100% separation of the materials that we started with. So if you had a sand salt water mixture, well, first thing you'd want to do is filter out the sand. And then once you have your salt water solution, we could then distill it to separate the salt and the pure water. Another type of distillation is called fractional distillation. And fractional distillation basically takes a sample, heats it up, and then we can boil it at a variety of different temperatures. So a common example of this is petroleum. So we get crude oil from the earth, and we can put it into this huge furnace and as we start heating it up different types of oils and gases come off at different temperatures so crude fuel oil comes off at a very very low temperature actually at a very very high temperature um, and as you get cooler we start to see other gases that will be released as a result so some of the gas that we use in automobiles comes off right here. Some of the other types of gases that we can use, diesel fuel for instance, comes off at a much higher temperature. So 
Fractional distillation relies upon the fact that each of these different substances boil at different points. And then another technique that we use is called centrifugation. So basically centrifuge means to spin from within. So we can use a centrifuge machine to spin and separate items based upon their blood or based upon their density. So here you have blood. We can put that into a centrifuge. We can spin it and the red blood cells are more dense than the serum. So you end up separating the two from each other. So it's a common use in the blood transfusion industry where people donate blood and they separate it simply based upon the density of the red blood cells, the platelets and the serum or the plasma and a centrifuge is able to separate all of them quite easily. So again, those are the different types of separation techniques. Um, I would expect that you could use and list seven different examples of physical properties and how we can separate them. Um, please make sure you jotted some notes down on this and we will spend some time in class discussing and utilizing all of these processes. Mr. Mechmech signing off.